All right. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Let's get started here. Uh, my name is Lee Bird. I am the president of BTEC. Um, uh, BTEC provides IT services and uh, specializing in cybersecurity for credit unions. And we are super proud of our partnership with Arctic Wolf. And uh, together we are working super hard to end cyber risk for credit unions. <laughs> so I'm really excited about our pizza cast today. Uh, so um, got a really, really great speaker, uh, Shuli Tatar. I can't wait to introduce you to her in just a moment, but I wanna do a couple of housekeeping items real quick. So um, this is a pizza cast. It's not a webinar. <laughs> so, <laughs> I didn't know what a pizza cast was. And then somebody told me today was National French Fry Day. So maybe next time we can do a French fry cast or something like that. But um, uh, I hope you have your pizza and you can enjoy lunch. I'm on the West Coast. It's 10 a.m. So I'm going to have a pizza in about an hour. But uh, you should have received a pizza gift card. If you didn't, let us know. And Kate, who is there, she will get it sent out to you so that you can be sure and get your, uh, your pizza. Uh, at the bottom of our screen is a little icon that says Q&A. Um, this type of pizza cast webinar, <laughs> I know we're going to get a lot of questions. Put your questions in there, and uh, we're going to gather all those questions together and try to get you some good information, some good answers. We're also recording this. So uh, after the pizza cast is over, uh, Kate will get this emailed out to everyone. And then um, let's see here. I think those are kind of the housekeeping items for today. So uh, I'd like to introduce you to Shuli Tatar. Uh, Shuli is a product marketing manager at Arctic Wolf. And Shuli, would you take a moment and tell us all about your expertise and, uh, and, and your skills. Perfect. Thank you so much, Lee, for this warm, welcoming <laughs> introduction. I really appreciate it. Hello, everyone. My name is Shuila Tatar. As Lee mentioned, I am the product marketing manager here at Arctic Wolf. A little bit about myself. Previously, I worked at vulnerability management as well as backup and cyber disaster recovery companies and Salesforce. And I held a bachelor degree in computer science as well as MBA. So that's a little bit about myself. So back to you, Lee. <laughs> hey, Shuli, I got a quick question for you. What's mm -hmm. your favorite pizza topping? Ooh, that's tricky i think pepperoni <laughs> pepperoni okay yeah uh i think i think i'm i'm like probably sausage and mushroom but i i find that i just end up getting veggie pizza kind of everywhere these days i don't know that's sort of what it is but pepperoni is pretty good that's a good one yeah i All live right. in new york city so uh i love you know <laughs> new york style pepperoni <laughs> Pizza. I'm sure everyone's going, what happened? This is all about pizza now. So um, as we get started, first of all, I'd like to really just sort of set the stage here. So um, really speak about the importance of this webinar and vulnerabilities, because I find in, uh, especially with credit unions, there's still a lot of confusion about vulnerabilities. What are vulnerabilities? Um, why are they important? Why do we have to have this conversation? So uh, as it relates to credit unions, over the last year, we have seen an increase in uh, cyber attacks, mostly ransomware attacks, mostly the double extortion, stealing member information, really, really bad stuff. Uh, credit unions are kind of a target right now. Um, what we've seen, and the FBI has even uh, posted information about this, you know, uh, kind of during COVID, it was, they called it the big game hunting. They were sort of going after the billion dollar corporations. And now they've really come down to the small and mid-sized financial institutions and a lot of focused targets on those. And Shuli, I, I, as we, right before we jump into the vulnerability uh, information, one thing I really wanted to kind of stress was, isn't it fair to say that most attacks are exploiting known vulnerabilities that haven't been remediated or fixed yet? Isn't that kind of what's happening? 
Yeah, that's the trend actually we are seeing. And uh, I believe we decided to put that slide in talking about zero days, same days and exploit vulnerability trends that we are gonna cover later in this webinar. But yeah, definitely there's a trend that we are seeing uh, over and over again, over the years. So uh, that's that's the big you know, trend that we are seeing. On top of that, you highlighted a really important point, which is, um, right now, it's more like targeting small, medium-sized companies, which is completely true, especially if we look at the Verizon Data Breach Investigation Report, this year's report, the, there are ransomware attacks that specifically targeting, you know, small and medium-sized businesses. So it would show the uh, value of having proper uh, vulnerability management and, you know, overall proactive way to approach uh, cyber security mindset will be a key component in the cyber security industry, in my opinion. All right. I'm not going to give away any secrets, but I'm excited about this because I think you have some information in here that is that, you know, I've been in this industry a long time. There's some stuff in here that I hadn't heard about before. So I'm super excited about this. All right, Shuli, go ahead. You can Perfect. take it away now. Thank All right, you so let's much. get started. Yep. All right. So we have a straightforward agenda. So what we are going to do is first, we are going to talk about some of the common vulnerability and vulnerability management terms that we just want to make sure that everybody is on the same page. And then what we decided to do is we decided to explain how proactive versus reactive cybersecurity would tailor. Because if we narrowed down the situation to vulnerability and remediation, we were like, oh, we want to cover that and then that. And that's the best way to capture the, all the important information that you should be aware of it. And then we are going to, towards the end, we are going to, you know, uh, highlight how Arctic Wolf uh, managed risk solution and services might help you in the, you know, in your organization. So this, you know, overall agenda and let's dive into it. So first we are going to start with the common vulnerability management terms, like I mentioned before. So there are some of the terms that mixed up quite a while, which are uh, threat vulnerability and risk. They are those terms most of the time used interchangeably. So let's dive into definition. I know it's a little bit boring, but it's important to understand the difference and then we can have a little bit more healthier conversation throughout this PISACast. So first we are gonna start with the asset. So asset might be people, property, or information. So when we say people, you shouldn't just think about the, you know, the people who are working for you or who is your customer. You should also think about the um, contractors as well as guests. So making sure that you have a complete uh, asset understanding from that perspective. And then properties might be tangible or intangible items. So intangible items, intangible asset might be reputation. Once your reputation is ruined, it's really difficult to take it back. We have seen over and over again in the industry from that perspective. So with that, Asset is what we are trying, oops, sorry, what we are trying to protect. That's the thing that we are trying to protect. Next stop is the vulnerability. Vulnerability is the weakness or gap in the security program that it can be exploited by threats to gain unauthorized access to an asset. So we have the asset and then they are trying to get into those assets. So that's what we call vulnerability. A vulnerability is the weakness or gap in our protection efforts. Next stop is the threat. Anything that exploits a vulnerability, it might be intangible, intangible or accidental and obtain damage or destroy an asset. A threat is what we are trying to protect against it. So, and then 
when we look at the risk, risk is the potential loss, damage, or destruction on an asset as a result of the exploited vulnerability. So risk is basically intersection of the asset, threat, and vulnerabilities. That is why it's so important to understand the difference between threats versus vulnerability and you know, risk. So I, I, from there, Lee, would you like to add anything? Did I miss anything? <laughs> you, you saw my eyes. You knew I had a comment. <laughs> you said something really important at the beginning under assets, under people. You mentioned vendors. And one of the things we're seeing for credit unions is the importance of doing really good vendor due diligence. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we're seeing is, is uh, supply chain attacks, you know, going back to the solar winds and Kaseya VSA. And so I attended a webinar with the FBI recently, and she spoke of third party vendors. We all know what a third party vendor is. She also spoke of fourth party and fifth party vendors, which I had never really heard that term before, but that that's pretty crazy. And then the last thing on vulnerabilities, we'll, we'll mention it towards the end as well, but we've got some great resources where you can actually go and there are databases of known exploited vulnerabilities. And these are things that your team should be looking at on a regular basis to make sure that if your assets in your environment are on that known exploited vulnerability catalog, you've got to make sure that you're on top of it. So uh, sorry to interrupt, Julie, but I, no, no, I get so excited about this kind of yeah. stuff. <laughs> please chime in. I know that you are also experts, so uh, I would love to, you to chime in anywhere you fit. So uh, next up is the write-off room. So that is the part that it might be a little bit, you know, off script. So the best way to explain the proactive and reactive cybersecurity is the simple concept called left off and right of boom. So it, that kind of explains the security conflict between the offensive as well as defensive perspective. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm trying to ask, uh, you know, explain what is this term means. Right of boom is the military term, like I mentioned uh, before. So in, um, it is basically a immediate response to an attack. At its core, bomb or boom or bang is the unwanted bad event for the defense. In our case, that will be ransomware, data breach that we can detect and investigate and then we can respond. Many of the organizations find themselves continuously in this stage. However, what you, and then, we have also left side of the boom, okay? So left of boom is the set of events that occurred the time uh, over the time before this boom happens. So what we are gonna do is, we are gonna little bit do a deep dive on the left of boom section. And we are gonna highlight the offensive perspective of this house with making sure that you have proper threat intelligence, proper risk management and preventions in, you know, in this area. So that is the left of boom and right of boom, the, you know, explanation that I would like to give because it talks with the real, um, real world events. In some cases in cybersecurity, it might be a little bit difficult to imagine those, you know, terms. And it just puts a perspective in my opinion. All right. So, our next stop is the NIST framework. Here at Article, we use NIST security framework heavily. You can be like, why this security framework? There are, you know, multiple uh, security frameworks out there that you can adopt. However, it's simple and it talks through which side is proactive, which part is reactive cybersecurity. That is why uh, we decided to move forward with that. And uh, Lee, if I remember correctly, a couple months ago, you had a webinar, right? Uh, with my, one of my colleagues, I believe. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, and as it relates to, yeah, as it relates to credit unions uh, and NIST specifically, 
Uh, the NCUA has the ASET workbook. They have the Intrex, uh, Intrex CU. I think they're, I know they're going to a new one as well, but all of those do follow the five pillars of NIST. So uh, Chris and I had done a webinar on this a couple of months ago, and that's important for credit unions. They're, you can't just kind of go off on your own and do whatever you want as it relates to cybersecurity. There are frameworks, and especially when the examiners are in to do an audit, you need to show that you are uh, following within those, um, those five pillars and their workbooks are very specific. And yeah, that's another, uh, we'll send a link out to that webinar as well, because that's a good one, because I think it helps credit unions sort of align their focus with that ASET workbook or the Intrex and that NIST security. So, but, uh, absolutely being proactive, I don't see it enough. I mean, it's it's still, we still kind of feel like a lot of people are putting lots of tools and resources into that reactive pot when really we should kind of, you know, there's so so much importance into that proact being proactive. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And um, another highlight of this, this you know, new security framework, uh, in my opinion, it's not just, you know, required by the compliances and other stuff, but I think it helps you to guide you through it and make sure that you are, you know, following the proper steps and proper, uh, you know, action item to take. So that is why we highly recommend it. And uh, that's what we follow. So over here, what we try to explain is we try to explain, okay, we understand proactive. Okay, we got it. You're talking about reactive, but what do you mean by that? So we are going one more deeper level to try to explain, you know, what are the action items underneath it? So from the proactive cybersecurity side, we have strong defense, cyber hygiene, or with, you know, security awareness training, uh, penetration testing and social engineering and vulnerability management. We will explain this section shortly and then on the reactive side of the house, we have monitoring for anomalies, forensic and incident response, as well as firewalls, because you need to have some, you know, we completely understand that you cannot, you know, remediate every single thing. You need to have firewalls in some cases. So when we say reactive side of the house, that's the things that we refer it. And then when we say proactive side of the house, those are the things that we would pay attention. So, but I want to highlight one last thing here. We are definitely not saying, oh, you have the proactive side of the house, so you don't need to react. We do not say that. You still need the reactive cybersecurity in place. What we try to explain is if you invest enough time and effort to proactive side of the house, you would less likely to react to that events and you know uh, that situation. So that's the you know highlight of this section. All right, so let's dive into it. So uh, what are you know proactive side of the house key components? We already you know uh, highlighted, which are split down to four main categories. And uh, Lee, if it's cool with you, I know that you really, you really passionate about you know penetration testing, vulnerable test assessment, vulnerability management. I will ask you to cover these too if it's cool. Yeah, of course. So All right. uh, go ahead. <laughs> well, the first thing is uh, my favorite icon on this whole slide is cyber hygiene. It mm -hmm. the term hygiene is so everybody sort of understands what that is. And we see so many environments that whether it's a turnover in staff or changing in vendors, that sort of thing. And, and you end up with uh, gaps in your security posture. And so that cyber hygiene is definitely one area that you, uh, you want to make sure that, that you're, you're absolutely focusing on. Uh, my favorite is vulnerability management. And I, I know that I've, we've already got a question here about uh, somebody asked, What's the difference between pen testing and vulnerability <laughs> assessments? Uh, unfortunately, that one I think is probably one that uh, gets that there's probably the most confusion about is mm -hmm. people do an annual penetration test or pen test mm -hmm. and think that that is the same thing as vulnerability assessments. And it's they're not, they're different. 
Mm -hmm. Um, so that is, you know, uh, absolutely. It's a key part of your overall posture. You have to do pen tests and, and Mm -hmm. that's kind of surely if I'm correct, I mean, it's more of an actual, uh, you know, white hat, a a good person doing, using, uh, attacking tools or, uh, systems to, to try to emulate what a threat actor would do to gain access into an environment. So, Mm -hmm. Uh, That is absolutely a key part of it. And the social engineering, you know, most of these attacks that we're seeing these days, there is an element of social engineering behind them where Mm -hmm. using uh, social media or calling a credit union and asking, you know, hey, is Bob there? (laughs) No, Bob's on vacation. (laughs) You know, (laughs) these are all part of of these attacks. So uh, did I get it? Did I get that right, Shuli? You are right on. I don't even, I'm not even sure if I should explain further, but I'll just cover the strong defense. So from the strong defense perspective, you should definitely if invest into a strong defense position. So what you need to do is you need to enhance operational preparation. It might be real or virtual battles. So, and uh, you can measure your uh, you know, detection and obtaining the information before actually cyber attack happens. So that would eventually uh, prevent the actively, you know, uh, active breaches that might happen in your environment. So it's all about preparation, getting ready for this situation. Cyber hygiene, you covered it perfectly. I just, you know, I love Verizon data breach investigation reports. So (laughs) I love numbers. So, uh, and I'll just drop some numbers from that report. So in uh, this to this year's data, Verizon data breach report, I believe 85% of the data breaches result with the employee action. So you need to make sure that you are educating your employees properly about good cyber hygiene. It is not because of the compliance requirements that you would do once or twice a year, but it's for own good. So it is it, always people would look down to the, you know, um, making sure like everybody feels like, oh, I'm not, you know, stupid enough to, I, I don't want to call it stupid, but, um, you know, you, you don't feel like, oh, oh, of course I know I shouldn't click this link, but, you know, we are all human and we always have that, you know, weak moment that you can just, you know, fall that trap basically. So, but if you get a constant training about the security awareness, it will be a little bit more difficult to reach because if something makes you, hmm, it's always something there, you know? So that's the cyber hygiene part. And from this penetration test perspective, yes, organizations should protect critical assets and they should always, um, you know, have that penetration testing in place because that's one of the you know requirements most likely in your you know in your um, industry. However, penetration testing is one time exercise during that time period, and uh, you just need to have that consistent, proactive approach to make sure that you are consistently. Uh, self-evaluating over and over again, which brings up bring us to the next step, which is the vulnerability management portion. As I mentioned, penetration testing is one-time exercise. It's that time during that circumstances. And we all know that overall attack surface would change constantly. You would hire new people or new people, uh, like some of the people would leave the company. That that would just impact your overall IT environment. And you just need to keep on, you, you just need to be on top of those, um, you know, environment. And that is the value of vulnerability management. Constantly, you would have a, you know, a constant discovery of the vulnerabilities, constant discovery of assets, and uh, and then change your position accordingly, constantly. So those are the 
four pillars that I would call if you would like to have proactive cybersecurity and you need to, you know, address every single one of them before, you know, moving forward with, you know, next steps. All right. So uh, let's dive into the benefits. So those are the pillars that we cover. And now we can talk about the benefits. So first one, first one is the your team is not constantly at rich. So it will be really exhausting for the teams to be instant, like constantly being reacting to something, some events, some incidents, and it's also stressful as well. So we just need to make our teams a little bit more, you know, chill. <laughs> And next one is actively preventing breaches. We already talked about that when we were talking about the strong defense. So um, then you have a strong defense. You would prevent any sort of, you know, data breaches, ransomware attacks, which uh, also enables you to cut up with the bad guys. So, and those bad guys might be, Unfortunately, inside jobs as well, there's not always all the, you know, bad things comes from outside. Yeah, when we look at the, the statistics, uh, I believe 90% of them comes from, you know, outside jobs and 5% um, is botnets and other five is unfortunately inside jobs that we need to pay attention. It would allow you to find mistakes when we when we say mistakes, it might be, um, you know, mistakes on your operation or related to your policy and procedures, or uh, it might be a misconfiguration. Misconfiguration is also a mistake that, um, you know, if, if you are not 100% sure, you can easily make that mistake and it can cause you uh, basically a data breach. And we have seen that over and over again. Julie, I have a quick story. So uh, we we did a vulnerability uh, assessment for a client at the end of last month, and the engineer found a, um, a router with a default password on it. There you go. And that hadn't been there the month before. So of course, this is part of our role and in, in with these credit union clients. We reached out to them. It turns out they had done... An, uh, they had uh, installed a new Spectrum internet circuit. They, mm -hmm. they had upgraded to Spectrum's fiber. The mm -hmm. Spectrum engineer uh, came out on site, installed mm -hmm. a new router, <laughs> and left the default password on there. So probably not intentional, but definitely something that puts the credit union at great risk, having access to the uh, internet router. So that's one of those things where you find mistakes. It wasn't anything that anybody had done maybe probably not intentional, but unless you have this kind of proactive approach and you just are sort of always reacting, you're never going to kind of cover those bases because, you know, uh, the environments are, are dynamic. They're not static. Things are always kind of changing. Definitely. That's a perfect example that, you know, I would call, uh, you know, uh, it could have been mitigated if they had a strong, proactive way to the, you know, cyber security. But that's definitely a kind of low hanging fruit that yep. is right there. So next up, uh, it would help with your overall compliances. Okay, we all know that when we have a compliance deadline, almost all IT and security teams would just drop off everything for a couple of days, maybe if it's not weeks. And then they would just focus on that compliance requirements to get it done. It doesn't have to be that way. If you have a you know, proper proactive cybersecurity, instead of reactive one, it would really ease up your you know, compliance process. And then lastly, it would reduce your overall attack surface. So we understand that there are so many threats, so many targets to your endpoint network, cloud identity, as well as people. It's just increase the overall attack surface, overall, you know, all the uh, environment that you have. With proactive cybersecurity, if you have a you know, strong defense and then cyber hygiene with 
uh, educating your employees, regular penetration testing and robust vulnerability management program, you would have a great control of your overall attack surface and that will reduce the risk on your attack surface. So those are the, you know, I would say seven fundamental benefits of the proactive cybersecurity. So let's talk about this slide that Lee mentioned uh, on the top of the uh, hour when we were talking about exploit and then, you know, which ones are exploit and then which ones are not. So I would like to walk it through because it's a little bit overwhelming in the top and then Lee, you can take it from there. So then we look at the 2011 to 2020. These are the all vulnerabilities where you can see here on the bottom with orange, those are represents the zero day vulnerabilities. And then uh, if you look at this blue one, blue one is the vulnerabilities disclosed after exploited. And then green one is the exploited same days as they disclosed. So, that would give us a really good understanding which ones are trending or which ones are exploiting, actively exploited from the others. I think it shows that you cannot react on every single vulnerability, every single thing that out there, but you need to have a, you know, if you have a proper proactive way to approach it, that would limit the data breaches. So that's my take on this, you know, data point. Lee, I would love to hear from you. What's oh my goodness. Thing? I can tell you, I mean, from real world experience, our business last year changed. And, you know, prior to, I wish this slide kept going beyond 2020 because we saw it uh, prior to, prior to, you know, the middle of 2020, um, you know, it was pretty standard to maybe have uh, quarterly or monthly vulnerability assessments and remediation. Um, and we really weren't that that afraid of those known vulnerabilities being exploited really within a, a very fast time frame. And then I think a few things happen. First is government regulation. Now there are laws that businesses have to disclose vulnerabilities or disclose breaches within a very tight window. Mm -hmm. And so manufacturers like VMware, and I'm not picking on VMware, but they're the one that everybody sort of recognizes because it's in a lot of environments, probably 95% of our credit union clients have VMware. Last year, they had six zero day vulnerabilities on ESXi and vCenter. Mm -hmm. And this is in a lot of data centers. And uh, the other big one obviously was the Microsoft on-prem exchange server. Same thing, oh, four yeah. or five critical updates. And, uh, and, and so kind of going back to quarterly versus monthly, now it really, your, your vulnerability um, uh, process and the, the assessments and the remediation, it, it's really become kind of a real time exercise, hasn't it, Shuley? I mean, it's not yeah. something that you can just say, oh, we're going to do this on the first day of each month. It, it really has to be ongoing. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. You you are literally spot on. And uh, I would just add on top of that, I think, uh, so Katie, uh, Kate, I'm going to send you a link. I would appreciate it if you can share with our audience. Absolutely. So, um, I just put on, I mean, Kate, Kate will deliver to our audience. So Arctic Wolf put a you know, web page together, the most exploited vulnerabilities of the 2021. And uh, Lee, you're spot on from the VMware perspective, as well as Microsoft. So those are the vulnerabilities that have been exploited over and over again. Uh, over Like in 2021, there are 20,000 only, you know, found in 2021, 20,000 different vulnerabilities has been found. Out of this 20,000 vulnerabilities, we narrow down to those 28 vulnerabilities. And, you know, those are the vulnerabilities that you might need to pay attention a little bit more closely. And uh, then we look at the trends of the, you know, those vulnerabilities. Zero, some of them are, you know, zero day and then, 
heavily exploited the same as the disclose date of those vulnerabilities so you know that that is i think really insightful information and every single vulnerabilities has their own blog post and um i know that so many people are using that page so i just want to you know point that out since we were talking about microsoft and we amber so that was really you know insightful i, I really appreciate it um Lee. so uh as we promised in the beginning of the uh, beginning of this PISA cast, uh, we already covered, you know, vulnerability assessment in a larger scale. So I would like to move a little bit towards to the remediation portion, if it's, you know, uh, fine with you, Lee. Yeah. So most of the time, most of the organizations, what we are seeing is that they would have a patch criticality, which can be high, medium, low, and then they would align those, you know, criticality to the vulnerability criticality, which can be high, medium, and low, according to CVSS version two version, you know, if, if that's the version that you are using. And then one would represent, I believe, you know, the most critical, and then we have multiple twos, and then we have three threes, depends on their status and then we have fours it's completely depends on how we how i you know uh, interpret this table so what i'm trying to lead is you need to have proactive approach which would enrich your proceeds uh, procedure and policies over time so instead of using this you know approach what we recommend is that you should you know elaborate a bit more so when we say one over here it would should it should be represented by the name as well because one might not mean you know the importance of the uh, importance of that uh, job so uh, I think best example will be in Germany um, so as you know um, then you get a grade you in US you can get A B C D uh, F and then in um, you know uh, I believe in most of the Europe you can get one to hundred and then you know hundred will be the best and then in Germany, it's a little bit more different. So if you get one, it means that you did it the best, which will be <laughs> equal to A. So <laughs> it's if you are working in an international company and if you do not have the proper rating as well as the name, I'm telling you, it's going to create some confusion. <laughs> so not naming is only enough but i highly recommend also describing the situation so for example for the critical vulnerability unplanned emergency change will be the ideal patch cycle and then they must be uh, mitigated or remediated within 4 to 24 hours and you need to box the time because we understand that, yes, you need to react in that certain amount of time, but it must be completed within certain amount of time. So if you uh, try to adapt this approach on your remediation and mitigation efforts, over time, you would also harden your overall security posture. So... That would be our recommendation. I strongly, you know, recommend you to switch the approach when it comes to, you know, remediation and mitigation structure of yours. And, and surely <laughs> this is the kind of information that should be in your risk assessment. So this should be not just making it up as you go. This should be part of your risk assessment. And it should be, uh, you know, every member uh, that's part of your um security team your it team all has to be on the same page everybody sort of has to understand how this how this is part of the organization fantastic so i'm gonna switch the gears and i'm gonna shortly explain how article Wolf can help you in this overall process so first i'm gonna start with our overall security operation platforms what are the offer like what are the solutions that we offer because 
in um you know some companies it might be really confusing so i prefer to explain it in a high level so that way you would have a you know better understanding at least so what we do is we leverage your existing technologies to gain a broader visibility on your overall attack surface and it might be endpoint, network, cloud identity, and human. And then we send all these telemetries to, into our platform, which will, which is built in an XDR architecture to solve the biggest challenges that organizations are facing. So we would uh, collect and then we would store, analyze all those data sources in a real time. And then uh, what we do is we have a, you know, concierge security del delivery model. And what we do is we tailor all your needs and all of our service and platforms to your needs to make sure that we are optimizing and maximizing the efficiency of your environment. So that, that might be a tactical day-to-day -day items and that, or it might be a bigger picture on your security journey. So you would have a dedicated uh, security operation person, security, class security uh, uh, person. So that way uh, we would deliver the value which is tailored to your own environment. So we have three main uh, products. So which are managed detection and response, which is our flagship product and then we have managed risk that I will cover shortly and then we have managed security awareness. So with managed detection and response what we provide is we provide the reactive side of the house. So it's 24 by 7 monitoring helping you detect response and recover from the modern cyber attacks. So and uh, managed detection and response has two additional add-on features, which is cloud detection and response and um, enhancing your security of your, uh, you know, infrastructure as a service and SaaS as a service assets. And we also offer data explosion. So this is the where our customers can explore the historic logs and analyze the data while working with their uh, concierge security team to understand the results that take action. And then uh, we have manage risk. Manage risk enables you to define, contextualize your overall attack surface and then it provides you risk prioritization on your environment. We advise you on the remediation steps to ensure that you are benchmarking against the you know, configurations as well as best, best practices to make sure that you are hardening your security posture over time. We have an add-on product for that one as well, which is called Cloud Security Posture Management. This would, this, this would enable you to discover, benchmark, and harden your cloud environment as well. Next one is the Mini Security Awareness. This would prepare your employees, like we discussed previously, for the cyber hygiene portion. And um, that would prepare your employees to recognize and neutralize the uh, social engineering attacks and eliminate the overall human errors. So this solution also has a add on um, versions, which is compliance content pack which is dedicated to HIPAA or PCI, depends on your industry. And um, this would, uh, you know, come as a compliance training. So um, these two, manage risk and manage security awareness, would fall under the proactive side of the house that we just, you know, cover. And then lastly, uh, we run our customers with the security programs and security operation capabilities by offering the incident response uh, delivered by the Tetra Defense. And um, I don't know if you know, but like uh, the Tetra Defense is the leading IR and digital forensic firm that 
uh, Article 12 acquire at the beginning of 2022. So this is the overall artic artic architecture for the uh, our uh, security operation cloud. Uh, we can dive into the you know manage risk solution itself if you would like, please. Or uh, we can look at the service component, how we are delivering the service component. Which one would you like to? Go for this it. is I like this slide. This is a good this one. one. All right, let's dive in. And by it. the way, we're we're getting close here, and we've got uh, we've got one more question. So we'll do oh, the question as soon as we're done with the. Uh, but we're we're getting close on time. Perfect. All right, I'll wrap it up really quickly. Then. So we understand that it's really difficult to get your heads around uh, all those, you know, activities that you must do. So here at Article, what we do is. Uh, we help you and we guide you throughout the process. And we do that in three main steps. So first is the deployment. Under the deployment phase, when we onboard you, we would make sure that you have all the, you know, uh, scanners or class security posture configuration, and you would gain access to the R platform. So it's like making sure that you are up and running from the installation and integration perspective. Next stop is the configuration review. We talk about this. It's really difficult to identify assets and then, you know, having vulnerabilities. It is, and now you have policies, procedures, bunch of stuff. So we would first have the concierge kickoff meeting. In this meeting, we would ask a lot of questions about pet cycle, SLOs, to basically understand and gain a little bit more under, uh, understanding of your overall attack surface. Next stop, we identify and cover your resolution. So uh, your dedicated concierge security team would start cooperating the information that it has been gathered at the kickoff meeting. And then uh, it would help you to do, help you to develop the overall vulnerability management program to you know contextualize your network and details next stop is the asset define and configure asset context we understand that not every single vulnerability every single asset is equal like for example our ceo's laptop is way more important than mine let's be frank <laughs> But it doesn't mean that I cannot get the, you know, my laptop cannot be exploited. But you need to have that contextualization. You need to have that asset criticality as well as workflows, some tagging to able to understand and contextualize your overall environment. And then what we do is, okay, we have the risk information. We have the asset information. We put these together with the threat intelligence and we prioritize those vulnerabilities and risk according to your requirements, according to your environment, according to your business requirements. And then next stop is vulnerability management cycle. As you know, security, uh, is not about destination. It's all about journey. And we understand that vulnerability management should be going through over and over again. That's why we created this four-step approach. You would first discover your asset and vulnerabilities. You would assess their situation and you would reprioritize and understand the new environment. And then you would go ahead and harden your environment by remediating those uh, vulnerabilities. And then you would validate whether or not you are able to mitigate it successfully. And we would help you through, throughout this entire process, you won't feel like you, were, you are overwhelmed with the situation. So with that, I know I took it longer than I expected, Lee. Sorry about that. Okay. But no, Julie, this is awesome. And, you know, can you go back to the previous slide real quick? Sure. <laughs> that that last part there, that uh, the management cycle, mm -hmm. this is the world that we're in now. Mm -hmm. And this wheel is spinning pretty fast like this. So if you've got a wheel that's going slow, you're probably not doing enough or doing it more frequently. So uh, yep. as, as I looked at that, I was like just seeing like a fan blade spinning around pretty fast. It's it, And that's that window 
that has to continue to be shortened and everything else. But all these prior steps, you've got to understand what your assets are. You've got to know, um, you know, kind of what the attack surface looks like. Um, and then, then you can put this program in place. It's so, so important. So uh, we have one more really good question, and I think we kind of answered it uh, already, but Julie, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you, how frequently should you look for vulnerabilities? And then kind of related to that, uh, how quickly should you fix them? <laughs> That's a, that one comes up a lot is, well, oh, yeah. we found this so, vulnerability, how, how fast do we have to fix it? Yeah, so um, unfortunately, there is no, you know, or oh, one description and then it fits all situation. Unfortunately, depends on your industry, depends on your size, depends on your complexity of your environment this cycle can go really long or really short. So unfortunately I cannot answer, okay, it's like every day <laughs> <laughs> or like every five months. So unfortunately I cannot say that, but the way uh, if I were you, I would you know, approach that situation is which environment you are looking. So if you're looking external or internal vulnerabilities, those are different situations. And then if it's possible, maybe you might need to, you know, uh, install an agent in your environment, which would provide you a continuous monitoring, right? So there are different ways to approach that specific situation. So uh, I know that's not the answer that you were looking for, but, you know. It's a good answer, though. And kind of related to it, what I would say is that, you know, security is, I, I say this all the time. Anybody that knows me has heard me say this a hundred times. They're going to get, they're going to roll their eyes. Security is nine tenths awareness. So you can't prevent or secure your environment from what you don't know about. So mm -hmm. everything we've talked about is putting in a, pl a plan or a process to provide you with information. And when you have the information, you can make determinations about what's critical, what's mm -hmm. high level, what's an acceptable risk. And these are all things that, you know, it, like you said, to answer, answer what, or what, what you said is there's no definitive answer, but you at least have to have the, the systems in place to be able to provide you with the information you need. Yeah, for sure. And you still, you know, need to have the reactive side of the house in case things fall through the crack. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, with that, uh, that will wrap up the things that I wanted to cover. And, um, do we have any additional questions? I think we covered the most, but let me check. That Yeah, we don't have any more on the panel here. So mm -hmm. I think we're good. All right. All right. Shuli, thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. Kate, thank you very much for putting this together. Kate Drankoff was very uh, influential in getting all the pieces and parts together for us. She's the best. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Shuli had a lot of fun. So uh, Kate will get an email out to everybody with uh, some of the links that we talked about with a recording from this webinar. Feel free to share it with management. <laughs> They're the ones that often have questions about things like security. And uh, again, thank you, everyone. Enjoy your pizza today. Everyone stay safe and well. And uh, if we can help with anything related to cybersecurity in your environment, please let us know. All right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Appreciate thank you it. Time. See you next time. Yeah. Take care. Bye.